Alright, welcome back to a new Touch Designer tutorial and a new year, so a very happy new year. And in this video we're going to look at um, virtual projections, so how you can use uh, Touch Designer to create 3D uh, rooms or like uh, scenes where you can project um, textures, videos, whatever onto any kind of surface, so 3D uh, models or like uh, grids and, and uh, etc. So in this case, we're just using grids and uh, a 3D model that I downloaded. And um, yeah, how you can animate the scene and stuff like that. I can use lighting and shadows. And um, yeah, you can use this just as it is, uh, just to, to create rooms to like uh, present your work in a different way. Or you can also use this for prototyping. So, so before you make an installation, just to sort of get a feel of uh, your room, uh, the visitors going through that or like standing in front of it. Yeah. Also, uh, you, to to show it to clients and the like. Cool. So let's get started. Prepare for some bad jokes. I'm sorry about that. And yeah. So I'm going to start with a grid because we want to have a floor, right? We want to have something that we can walk on that the walls are built on. So I want to, yeah, add a grid sub and change the orientation to ZX. And then we have this grid here and we can change the size to like 50 by 50. So or, I don't know, even bigger. It doesn't really matter. So, so we just have like a nice big floor. Let's just make this bigger. I like it more it doesn't really it doesn't really matter like i might want to tell you also that it doesn't really matter <laughs> yeah i haven't changed I, I don't know i'm i'm still as like i still talk a lot of weird stuff so we want to have uh, an attribute create here we don't actually need an attribute create here sorry about that uh let's add a geo and um let's add a camera and uh, let's add a light, but we're going to add more lights later on. But for now, uh, let's just uh, go up a bit. So we're like actually putting our light on, like shining our light onto the grid. And uh, for the camera, we're going to have, we're going to use a no. So in look at, we can just call this look at me, please. We, we really don't have to call it that way and um, just put it on the look at here okay that <laughs> um, yeah cool now we can just go up with our camera a bit and um, so we see our grid and now we can add a render top and change the resolution to 1920 by 1080 change the pixel format to something higher and especially important is the anti-aliasing, which we want to have a very high on this one. So 32. Um, let's add an RGB key. So we have a black background. So you can already see our like floor there. And let's just add a null, which we're going to call BG. Let's turn on the display. And we have a gray to black gradient. Cool. A gradient. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so, yeah, cool. We can uh, now add some walls. Let's just add one wall for now. So we're going to use another grid. And this grid, um, we're going to make this like, I don't know, eight, eight meters. So this is going to be meters. Now let's just keep it at one. And I'm going to show you why in a second. Here we want to have an attribute create. And I'm going to show you why in a second. Let's just turn on the tangents here and add a geo. So a second geo. And now you can see we have um, a uh, wall that's very wide. Let's go to our view on our camera and just change the FOV angle so we can see the whole wall easily. We can also just zoom out here. And let's go down a bit. So. And you can see our wall, uh, when I do this, you can see it's like it's being sort of split in half here. It's just sort of drowning. So let's change this to uh, 0.5. <clears throat> and then we just push it all out uh, a bit. So actually what, what we have to do here isn't just 0.5. Let's actually just copy this parameter, 
pass that in here and uh, divide this by two. And because um, you know, if we make this two wide, then now this is one and it's still correctly positioned. Okay. Um, why did I leave it at one? We might want to change that later. Let's actually not have this at one, but like at one. 0.75 because I think that's sort of the average um, height of a woman, right? I don't know. Um, it's just what I think. Uh, what what I would suggest is that you in your whatever wherever you create your project, that in there you also create a folder called assets, or whatever you want to call it, and in there you you download this uh, file. You need you need a an account, but you know, that's it's free. It's okay. Um, and I I have uh, downloaded this. Like it's like just search for person, and then you can click free and animate it. And uh, that there she is. Um, yeah, she's animated actually. That that's why what, what I like about her. I like my woman women animated. <laughs> uh, sorry, um, I'm gonna. Just drag the file in here. It's just an FBX uh, file, and as soon as I do that, you can see. Actually, <laughs> this is super weird because you can see the face. I think. Oh God, it's sort of very strange. Um, so we need to go to our X form on our FBX and make this a lot smaller. Let's just do something like 0 0.007, and now you can see uh, it sort of works. Um, we want her to be 1.7 five tall and uh, so we we need to uh, just change her to be the same size as our wall so let's just do that so I don't know like 1.01 1 .01, uh, 0 0.01 I don't want, I don't want to go perfect here there we go so one point point zero one zero five <laughs> Um, okay, now we have our uh, correctly sized. Now we can go to our grid and change this to like three meters tall or something. You know. Um, cool. We also might want to uh, change her position so, so she's not in the wall, but she's like in front of the wall and uh, maybe rotate her uh, around so she's looking at the wall. And it looks like she's way bigger than the wall, but you know, she's just way closer to camera. So if we just zoom out a bit, we can see what's happening here. We can maybe go up a bit. So there we already have a woman and sta uh, standing in front of our little wall. So this is already looking cool, right? Um, just changing the X here. All right. So, um, what do we want to do next? Let us actually project something on there, right? Mm. So, no, actually before I project something on there, I want to change the light. So, um, I want to go to light here. No, whatever, let's project something on there because that's what the video is about, right? So let's add a noise top. And um, let's just make this a, a typical size. So like 1920 by 1080. Um, let's go ahead and uh, change a few things here. So like period to like two, harmonics to like five, maybe go down with the harmonic spread, go up with the harmonic gain, go down with the exponent. Change this monochrome to off. Wait, some things. Oh. Whatever. That's fine. Let's go to our transform and change this to abs time dot seconds times point one. And 
Now if I play this, you can see this is animated. So. Cool. Now it looks nice. Um, now let's also add a displays. This is really not like necessary, but I uh, I want this to look a bit more interesting. So just point one, point one on the displays weight. Let's add some blurring here and put that down there. Blurred more. Yeah, and um, maybe change this to point five. Now we got some interesting stuff going on here. Cool. Let's add a null and change this to projection one because I want to probably do two, right? So um, there we go. Now we have our noise going on and now we want to actually project it on here. A uh, simple way to do this, which isn't actually a projection, but which is something you might want to might think of first is a just using a fong so, or like a PBR. Uh, so you could just put that on here, sorry about that, and let's put that on here as a color map and you know, then you'd have that on there. So it works like that, but it's, it's not what we're looking for. What we're looking for is that we want to use a light here. And instead of light 2, let's call this projector, because this is actually what's going to project our image onto this uh, surface. Um, so, on this projector, we want to go to light, and here we can see we have a projector map, and we can just put our map on there. And now we see our little projection down there, and um, so we need to really like move uh, out quite far. So this is like the right size. We could also do this with uh, by changing the projector angle. I'm gonna get to that later, but uh, I think a better way is to just change the projection, um, like projector position. And um, so what you could do is you could just move up to like make this fit on there. Um, let's actually go closer again. So something like that. So now it's like properly positioned. Um, and before I keep on going, I wanna change this to cone light. So we're gonna come back to this, but uh, it's just too bright right now. Um, okay, so, um, right, now we have uh, that projected onto our wall. We might want to, like, adjust the wall so it's a bit more in tune with the size. Now it actually looks cooler this way. Um, and, right, so, on this light here we can uh, also change, um, no, we can actually go to shadows and turn on the shadows with soft to the map. You can see it looks kind of shitty, so we can like change the resolution to something uh, a bit higher. And you might also want to go to light and change this to cone light. And then you can see it's really a nice shadow of our uh, woman here. We might also want to use the woman actually like further away from the wall. We can also like change the uh, height of the wall, like four maybe, it's like 10. Something like this. No, whatever. I'm just gonna leave it this way. But yeah, you can you can change that to your liking. Um, so you can also see it's being projected onto the woman, and the shadow of the woman is on there. So it looks quite realistic already. What we can do now is uh, change the lighting uh, situation. So we can like change this to cone light, as I already did. We can uh, turn on our shadows and uh, also make this like a bit higher. Just multiply it by, by two. And then just copy and paste this and uh, position the other one differently. So maybe behind the wall. So we get this cool shadow kind of game, shadow play. And uh, yeah, nice. That's already working pretty cool. Um, just to make sure that we don't see the edge of the uh, 
off the um, grid ever we can go to our camera and go to settings and turn on the fog change this to black and then uh, change the fog near and the fog far and then we can like whatever is behind that is just gonna be black like there's just too much fog there can't see through that through that mm. okay so play around with the position of the of the light here that really makes a difference that really makes the scene and uh, before we continue i want to like just add a bit of noise here because i always like that it really makes a difference change the type to random go down with the amplitude the offset and especially the noise scale and we instantly have a nicer looking scene not sure if you see that in the video but yeah okay mm. so we're very close with our camera uh what we want to do maybe is um move further away and um change the the translate here and now you can see everything got sort of foggy more because uh, the fog is like close so we can maybe change that to be something further um, but yeah this is already looking pretty sweet um, actually I, I, I want the wall to be bigger after all so let's just change this like maybe like 12 by 5 and now we can just go to our projector and uh, move further away and uh, yeah, one thing I wanted to show you here is actually using a null as well. So um, again, a look at, and now when we put this to like uh, a certain uh, height, then whatever we, uh, oh, that looks really cool. Um, whatever we, uh, however high we position our uh, projector here, it's always gonna like, you know, um, be the right, like, project at the right position basically at least like from the height and, and we can see we can like change the 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 woman's um shadow which is a cool thing to do <laughs> all right let's actually again adjust this so it fits okay so that works cool this looks really nice now mm. let's um see uh let's make the wall a bit more interesting because you know in the real world we that there are you know screens just made for projectors i don't know how they're called like these just these white things you can like roll out um but you know sometimes you project on walls and you might want to like um simulate that as well so you might want to add a substance top and select concrete and select PBR, uh, add a PBR, put this on here, see substance top, and then put that on here. And it's gonna get very dark first. Uh, might wanna go to input values, put up, like pull up the luminosity, we don't want any moisture. And on the PBR, we can just go up with the base color to like two. And uh, just what we have now is something that sort of looks more like a wall. You can't, like, okay, you can't go further up. Um, so you can also add more like uh, other substances. So right now we just have concrete. You can add uh, anything here um, and download from the web. So like substance, substance materials um, or whatever they're called. I don't know. Uh, and it just looks more like a wall, which I like. So. And you know, if you if you move away the light, uh, or like if you change the light situation, the, like the the shadows of the wall, because it's a PBR material, they're like gonna change with it. Not because of it, not because of it, because it's Jesus, help. <laughs> not because it's a PBR, but because we have you know normals in here, so it's just the normals doing their thing. Um, yeah load um cool so what's up if we want to change uh if we want to add like a second screen 
because you know you might want to like have this installation where you have I don't know several walls and um, yeah so let's just put the woman there and let's just copy and paste this amazing so um, let's go to our geo and let's say we just want to like have these sort of stand-up walls you can of course just rebuild rooms and um, as well but you know I just want to have these huge sort of walls that are just standing freely in the, in the uh, room so what I'm gonna do is uh, change this translate here and uh, maybe move a bit closer I don't know something like this and now let's add a second wall there somewhere so let's go to the geo of the second wall and um, change its position here With bigger steps you can see the projection of course uh, stays because we're not using a PBR or something uh, Fong um, so yeah like you you're gonna have to readjust that so now we're like putting the wall over there uh, we can we can turn it around let's actually go here uh, to split the view go to geometry viewer and um, so we can just see how we're actually like positioning it uh, so yeah let's put it somewhere there as I did in the preview in the beginning and um, what I want to do is uh, go to a, like also let's just call this projector one and copy this and copy this because we want to have uh, a second null that we we're looking at. This is important. And for the second null, we want to use the same um, values that we have here. So I'm just going to set these manually to 11 and 11. You can already see this is uh, working pretty well. Actually, super well. Um, let me go to the cam and uh, change this X and zoom out. So yeah, it's it's quite nicely on there, but uh, it's not perfect yet. So might want to um, change the uh, X a bit. So that's actually all we need to do. So just adjust these uh, X and Z coordinates to, to fit your needs. And to like, uh, as I said earlier, to like fine tune this, you can change the projector angle a bit. So to see this better, let's actually copy and paste this light and put that somewhere else so we can like see what's happening just for now. Okay. Um, let's change, let me change the cam here. Okay, let's just copy this camera so we're not not screwing up the first one and delete the look at here. And now we can like freely uh, oops, freely move around if I could. There we go just so we're like seeing what we're doing here. So this is also a cool view actually. Um, yeah, so this is actually perfect. So what's important here, what I'm, what I'm going at, uh, what we wanna do like the null, like the look at null for the projector is always the, the, the target that we wanna look at. So we wanna position that in the center of our, um, of our, uh, Wall. So if I was to like move up the wall, you can see the projection is still down there. So now we would have to like change this um, to uh, to fit that. So let's just move this up. Yeah. Okay, but let's put our wall back on the floor. Um, I like the lighting situation. That that looks cool. That we have all these shadows going on. Mm. 
uh, yeah, just about the shadows, it's really important that you have set this to cone light. Uh, you can change the cones, uh, cone sizes here, uh, dim with delta, angle, and roll off, um, and and yeah, that, that's that's basically it. <laughs> um, one one thing I want to show you as well, which we can do nicely right now because we're like in this. Uh, can't actually see that well. Why is that not a problem now? Okay, so just if that is a problem, I don't know why it's, <laughs> it's always the same. Like in videos, something is suddenly different. Um, often, uh, the, the thing is here with like these projections, often is that they're like still being projected behind the wall. I don't know why it's not happening right now, but usually it is. Um, that it's some kind of bug that it's like projecting through the wall. So if, if that is happening to you, you can change the this, like turn on the distance attenuated. And then um, you can just, that's just means that's gonna be projected only in uh, uh, in between these values. So like between, if you were thinking in meters, between 70 and 71 meters. So if I make this like shorter, it's not gonna reach that anymore. And if we make make this too far, it's like, like, yeah, that doesn't actually work. You get the idea though. So if you ever have the problem that your projection is going through the wall for whatever reason, I, I don't know why that's happening. You can uh, mess with the distance attenuation and then uh, to get rid of that. So it's sort of like a bug fix. Or I'm not sure if it's a bug, but uh, yeah. And what we also might wanna do is um, copy and paste this to have two different projections. So just go down with the period here, uh, change the seat maybe, and put this one on, uh, on here. So now we have like two different projections, which is cool. All right, let's go uh, back to render and select camera one. And um, what I wanna do is animate the, um, the projection here. So let's... Um, just uh, add an animation comp and add a null here. And on the animation comp, let's just quickly click on edit. And uh, actually before that, let's just check out what sort of values we want to use here. So I want to go like maybe animate this to go from, from like up to like down. So we want to go from like, I don't know, uh, 12Y to like uh, 2y or something. So actually, let's just add all. No, let's. Uh, we can do this nicely with x, y, z. Let's just um, add all, all of these. And so on the y, we want to go from like 12 to like 2. So just click on the click on these, and then on the v, just type in the value, and then just press H to, to uh, like click anywhere and click and like press H on your keyboard. W what I also did, uh, which is actually important to do before, <laughs> sorry about that, um, is to change your um, end and R end to whatever length of the animation you wanna have. So uh, this is 20 seconds. Um, so usually it's set to 600 and that was a bit short from to me. So I just changed this to 1200. Okay, so um, for the uh, other other values, so let's let's just see if this works. Um, let's uh, make this active and use this on the Y. So now, if we play this, you can see we're slowly like going down with the camera. So with Alt, uh, you can like add more. So we might want to go faster in the beginning, like down, and then smooth that out. Um, let's just uh, yeah. So this this works nicely. <laughs> let's add some uh, X rotation. So we might want to go from like, I don't know, 15 to minus four. So 15 to minus four, click anywhere and then an H. And so let's put that in here. And for the Z, uh, we might want to go from, yeah, like 40 to like six or something. So you just click on the first one 
40. And click on the second one, uh, right, like six. And let's see uh, if this uh, fits our ones. You can already see the Y could be a lower. Let's just change this to one. Um, we can also uh, change the look at me, please, to uh, something higher. So we're like looking up at the end. Uh, I like that more. It's a bit more intriguing. <laughs> so, okay. Okay, so we're actually like... Uh, the, this is too high. I want to go something like this. Same with the Z. Okay, for the for the X, we we might actually want to change this to like ten. So we like moving more. Yeah, that's cool that we can see her at the end as well. That's a bit different from what I showed you in the beginning, but you know, it's just messing around. Um, <clears throat> there's no proper way to do this, or like no no correct values. So um, this is cool at the end, you know, but in between you don't want to have this animated probably, but more like um, see your scene well. So in this case, actually, you might want to just leave this animated and you can just go to render and change this to cam2 because, you know, that was uh, had like a nice view. So cam2 is really just to, to like set up your things. Um, and uh, cam1 is really for, for like the, the output. Um, so here we can see uh, this is like way too bright, I would say. So this is cool, like uh, totally, totally cool. And here you can change the cone size. You can really make spotlights there. Or you might want to like go down with this. So we have some more like, like longer shadows. This is cool. This is very cool. Okay, um, I think the last thing I want to show you Mm, is that of course you don't have to uh, use grids um, to to project this on. Uh, you can of course use anything. So you can like just add a sphere and uh, put that in there and uh, change. Whoops, <laughs> that looks really weird. Mm, I might want to go up with the uh, center here, and then you can see. Like as long as you, like, yeah, for some parts there is um, projection and then for some there isn't. Why there is this, uh, why is there this weird circle? Well, that's because um, the PBR, it's because of the PBR, period. <laughs> uh, you can you can turn that off and then uh, it's gone. But then you also don't have texture anymore. You can somehow change this. You can try changing this with texture. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really. I want to change this to no. Okay, it still just stays. I, I. Yeah, I've had a lot of problems with that. <laughs> if you have a fix for that, please let me know. Um, I just wanted to show you. Uh, that you can project this on any surfaces, or you could also, you know, just add a, this is just gonna be a mess now, just so you see what I, I just wanna show you quickly. You can like, you know, project on several surfaces at the same time. So that's that's really where the power of, project, of the projection comes in, because, uh, you know, with a PBR or like a Fong, we, we couldn't do this, I think. All right. Mm. Let's go back to our cam one and uh, just some final thoughts. This uh, really, I wouldn't overdo this, just yeah, one thing. Uh, let's select all of these, turn off the display, that's gonna make things faster. 
Um, and generally, I, I wouldn't go too like crazy with this because this projection thing uh, really uh, is quite uh, intensive for the both the CPU and GPU, I suppose. Mostly GPU, I, I'm not sure, but it's generally definitely takes a, a lot of resources. Um, it's running smoothly for me now, but yeah, just just be careful with that. And um, yeah, I, I I tried some some different things with the projector setup. So it, it takes a bit to like um, understand how you can really like uh, position your uh, projectors. Just make sure that um, the uh, X and Y are the same as the position of your uh, position geometry. And then with the uh, X and uh, Z of your projector, you can uh, align align it. And with the uh, with the shadows, uh, shadows are kind of tricky. It's important that you have the cone selected, and uh, you can like uh, you can change your shadow uh, shadow resolution. But it's also at some point really gonna drain uh, your your computer, if you can say it that way. Um, yeah, with the animation you can go crazy, do some cool animations there. Of course, you can export this, um, and yeah, I, I'm really interested to to see different uh, things here and different sort of rooms. Mm, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was a rather long one, uh, right? Yes, <laughs> and. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm definitely excited for this year. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start working more with Notch, probably. I really want to check that out, and uh, probably Unreal at some point. And uh, I'm going to make tutorials for that as well at some some point this year, hopefully. And yeah, there's there's some, some interesting stuff happening. So yeah, and thanks a lot to all the patrons uh, still supporting me this year. And um, if you want to have to file for this or just check out some other cool stuff, go, go there. And yeah, thanks a lot and see you uh, in the next video.